himself. Father God, we thank you tonight. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. God, you are worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity just to praise you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity, another privilege to praise you in this house, Father. We thank you, Father God, for a place to worship you, a place to celebrate you, a place to bow down and, and honor you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this Hollywood place. Lord, we miss this place. Father God, we, we desire this place. We thank you for this place, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for sins of omission and commission. Forgive us, Father God, for falling short for doing those things that are not pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight as we open up your word. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will go forward. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will fall on good soil. Bless your word, Father God, that your word, Father God, will rule and super rule our actions, our thoughts, and our very being. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us today, Father God, that we will obey your word. We will live according to your word. And Father, that we will re be reaching others through your word. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, honorful name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. 
praise who? He is. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. I tell you, he's worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He is the worthy God, and he's worthy to be He's worthy to be praised. We've come to worship God tonight in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said we've come to worship God tonight in this place. Yeah, we've come to worship him tonight in this place. Amen. We've come to worship God tonight in this place. And we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. As we have been taking a... A view at uh, First John. I want to turn the page tonight and look at Nehemiah chapter eight. Nehemiah chapter eight. I want to turn the page just a little bit, just for a moment. Look at Nehemiah chapter eight in the Old Testament. The book is Nehemiah, and you will agree that we've been in a building program. <laughs> I'm so glad. You know, I, I used to wonder what the folk were talking about, but now I understand real well. I don't look like, thank God, I don't look like what I've been through. I tell you, I don't look like what I've been through. This last month and two days has been, whoo, good God Almighty. It, been, it has been some time to reflect, some time to reject, some time to be motivated to gather in the house of the Lord. Thank you for gathering here tonight. God has given us another chance, another privilege to come to this house, and I'm glad about it. And those of you who are listening by live broadcast, I know you're glad about it also. We thank God for this privilege. I'm in Nehemiah chapter eight. I'll be looking at verses five through 10. Nehemiah chapter eight, verses five through 10. Uh, really, we're gonna be looking at verses one through 10 overall. But I just thought this was fitting for our getting together again tonight. Hallelujah. It is fitting. For us to get together <laughs> again tonight. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. We've got, we have come together <laughs> one more time in this Hollywood place. We thank God for one more, one more time. I'm telling you, I'm great. Are you excited for one more time? <laughs> you may not have known what it was talking about. <laughs> but now I understand a whole lot better. As they were saying, Mississippi, I understand a whole heap better now. I understand a whole heap better now what they really are talking about. It's, together, it's a good to get together one more time. Hallelujah. It is good to get together one more time. Nehemiah chapter 5. Nehemiah chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Uh, I hope we'll recapitulate verses 1 through 10. We'll be reading verses 5 through 10. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, then, blessed the Lord, the great God, then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Verse number eight, so, so they read distinctively from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah was the governor, Ezra the priest and strive, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, to how many? To all the people, this is holy. This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not moan nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions of those Send portions of those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. 
You know what I want to talk about. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. I, I, I just come to the conclusion tonight that this Bible study will be like none other. And I think you've come to that same conclusion also. We're looking for the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. And certainly it has been God who has kept our minds. Kept our hearts. Kept our very bodies healthy during this last month period. I'm telling you, it's been a trying time. But I want to remind us tonight that the devil is on his job. He's always busy. The devil is doing a good job at what the devil does. The fact of the matter is we need to start doing good jobs of what we ought to be doing. The devil, the devil has has looked to kill, to steal, and destroy. My first point tonight is the devil is trying to keep us from a sibling. The devil is trying to keep us from coming together. Right there in verses number one and verse number two, we find, as we have found in previous verses in Nehemiah, that there's always something and somebody trying to hinder the going on of the saints. Yeah, you, you, you know, you may have come across some sand buyers and toe buyers. You may have come across somebody that always has something negative to say when you're trying to do a good work. They want to, to Nehemiah to come down. They said, you ought to come down and stop building that little building because even if a fox run across it, it's going to shatter. It's going to fall down. And here you are putting all of your energy, all your time into building a wall, building a building. So you're going to always have somebody that's trying to stop you from doing a great work. When we look at verses 1 and verse 2, we find out that... All of the people gathered together as one man. Everybody, all of the people got together, and when they got together, they had one as one man, as one thought, as one motive, as one gathering. And so when we get together, we ought to have one thought. We ought to have one united front. We, we ought to have unity when we get together. Let me tell you, you may, have, you may have enjoyed your time away from the New Beginning Church, but let me tell you, this, this period has been a period like none other. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you something today, and you don't mind that. I just call you together, listen to, listen, listen to my testimony. <laughs> it's been a trying time. It's, it's been a time, it was more trying than actually building the whole building. It, it was more trying than actually walling through the mud trying to get the cement in. It has been more trying than just putting the wood, the, the brick, and the model all together. Let me tell you, this month has been a trying month. But I thank God that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me tell you, that we ought to get rejoicing. We ought to get excited. We ought to have enthusiasm because of how far God has already brought us. Let me tell you, I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about cars. I'm talking about just the presence of the Lord. In verses number one and two, they were excited about getting together. Let me tell you, we ought not take it for granted when we can get together. The Hebrew writer says it like this, that you ought to come together and assemble yourself together and don't do like other folk that do not come together in assembly. Verses one and two says that all the people got together. They gathered together in one place. They gathered together near the water gate. They gathered together all on one accord. Verse two says it like this, and it gives us the fact that when we gather together, everybody ought to come together. Look at verse number two. Verse number two says, so when Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men, and women and all who could hear with understanding the first day of the seventh month. Let me tell you, when we get together, we ought to bring our children together. When we get together, we ought to come together. When we get together, we ought to assemble with one purpose in mind, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify God, and to lift him up. Are you with me tonight? 
We ought to come together, we ought to assemble together, and we ought to hear God's word. And when we get together, we ought not come together just to do our little thing. We ought not come together just to see who's with who. We ought not come together to see who wears what. We ought to come together to hear God's word. Verses 1 and, one and 2 declares that they came together to hear God's word. They came together with an understanding. Look at it. Look at it. Verse number 2, it says that everybody that could understand the word of God, they got together. Let me tell you, if your child can understand how to do an iPad, if your child can understand how to do a telephone, if your child can understand the Internet, he surely can understand the word of God. So we ought to assemble everybody together. You know, some people have come to the conclusion that they don't have to come together anymore. But let me tell you, this was worse than COVID for me. <laughs> now, let me just share with you that during the, the shut in, I knew that everybody was supposed to shut in. But now it's the new beginning church that shut out. We wasn't even shut in. We were shut out. But God has delivered us. And tell, I'm telling you, it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. So he says that we all should get together. We all should assemble. And we should assemble so we can hear the word of God. So the priest stood, the priest stood, Ezra stood up, and he brought the law. And when we hear, we ought to hear what God has to say. Let me just share with you today, we ought to just not make up stuff. We ought not just come up with, with internet stuff. We ought not bring to the Lord the stuff we hear on CNN, ABC, NSBC, and certainly not Fox News. We need to understand when we get together, we ought to come to hear God's word. The Bible said they came to hear God's word. They assembled together and everything that they did, they did it with understanding. Yeah. So, my, so, so let me just share with you tonight that we need to seek to understand God's word. We need to seek to have a good understanding of God's word. We want to hear what it has to say and we want to understand what it has to say. And not only should we understand it, we ought to do what it has to say. The Bible says in verse number two that men and women gathered there. Let me just share with you. It doesn't matter, men, if you are a man or not. You need to come together in the house of the Lord, in the assembly of God, and spend time with one another. It says, it, says, it says that they came the first day of the seventh month. That's significant, but I won't deal with it right now. Verse number five says, Ezra came and he opened the book. He says, the, the text says that Ezra came and Ezra opened the book in the sight of the people. The first thing I want to say about that verse is that the word of God must be open. The, the word of God must be an open word. It ought not sit on our dashboard. Without being open. It ought not sit as a piece of furniture at our house without being open. The word of God ought not sit on the pulpit just thrown over there just for a piece of furniture. It ought to be open and it ought to be read. Okay. The text says that the heirs will open the book in the sight of the people. In other words, the book ought to be vis visible. Yeah. The book ought to be in the presence of the people. The book ought to be open in the presence of the people. The people need to see that the book is open. He, it ought to be visible. It ought to be open in the presence of the people. It ought not just be open in private, but it ought to be open in public. He says he opened the book in the sight of the people, and he was standing above all the people. Let me just unpack this right now and let you know he wasn't standing above the people because he was better than the people. He was standing above the people so the people could see him. That's why we have a pulpit. That's, that's why we have a stage so the people can see you who is presenting and see those who, who are listening can see them and they can see them. It's simply because he stood above the people so he can be seen and he can be heard. All right, and I want to tell you, the word of God ought to be visible. The word of God ought to be visible. God's word ought to be visible. People ought to see you. Your children ought to see you with the word of God open. Your neighbors ought to see you with the word of God open. 
your, your, your co-workers ought to see you with the word of God open. People have to see God's word and it must be open. The, the next thing I say to you today, right there in verse number five, I say to you that the word of God must be respected. The, the Bible says that when Ezra opened the word in sight of all the people, and, and he, for he was standing above the people, and the, Ezra blessed the word, blessed the Lord, the great God, then lifted up, the, they lifted up their hands and they bowed down their heads. Let me tell you, the word of God ought to be respected. This word, this word, God honors his word more than he honors his name. Ezra blessed the Lord. We ought to bless the Lord with the word of God. There's no better way of blessing the Lord than through his word. It is no better thing for a father or mother to hear than your child repeating what you have said in his word. Yeah, you want to hear You want to hear that child repeat after you. You want to hear that child believe what you have told them. You want them to regurgitate the things that have taken place in their lives. So the word of God must be open. The word of God must be visible. The word of God must be respected. Then the word of God must be honored. 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 It says, they said, amen. When the word of God was read, then they lifted up their hands and they said, amen. They said, amen. The word of God must be honored. The word of God must be honored. The word of God must be honored in such a way that the people will say amen. You ought not say amen to any old thing. You ought not say amen to just any old situation. But when the word of God comes and the word of God is true, you ought to honor the word of God. The Bible says they said amen. And they, they honored the word of God by saying amen. They said amen. They said amen. They said amen while they lifted up their hands. So God ought to be praised because of the word of God. Amen. Let me tell you, God ought to be praised because it's his word. We ought to praise God because of the word of God. We ought to lift our hands unto him. We ought to shout out loud because of him. Because God's word is what we are looking to hear. Amen. He says not only that, they bowed down their heads and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Let me just tell you, the word of God is our authority. The word of God is our authority and we bow down because of God. We bow down to God because God has given us just a snippet of his authority. The God's word is our authority. In other words, we need to make sure that we honor God's word by obeying his word. And regardless of what anybody else says, we're going to honor God's word. We got to honor God's word, respect his word, because God's word is God's authority. God's word is our authority, and we're going to follow the authority that God has placed us under. Yeah, so we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't just do it our way because God's word is our authority. We, you know, Frank Sinatra has really messed a lot of us up. Frank said, he, I did it my way, and now we're going to declare we did it our way. Burger King has really done us a wrong deal because they can say you can have it your way. Let me tell you, you got to do it God's way, respect God's word, honor God's word, open God's word, make God's word visible and make sure that you honor God's word as the supreme authority. When anybody preaches or teaches, you ought to honor God's word or beyond what they say. You ought, to, you ought to respect God's word. You ought to reverence his word. And you ought to worship God because of his word. The Bible says in verse number six that they bowed their heads down to the faces, their faces to the ground. So they submitted themselves unto God's word. They submitted themselves unto God's word. They submitted themselves unto God's word. Verse number eight says, so they read distinctively from the book. 
They keep talking about the book. They keep talking about the, the word of God from the book in the law to understand the reading. To the law of God, they, they read God's word distinctively from the book in the law of God and they gave sense to it. And they helped them to understand the reading. Everybody who didn't understand the word, somebody else helped them to understand the word. So I want to tell you, the word of God must be received intellectually. The word of God must be received intellectually. You have to have a good understanding of the word. And you may need somebody to show you in the word. So the word of God must be received intellectually. Because the word of God is something that you can't leave home without. You can't take a chance on getting it wrong. You cannot afford for, for the word of God not to be right. The word of God must be understood intellectually. The word of God, the Bible says that they supported each other by helping each other to read the word, to, by helping each other to read the law of God, by helping each other to understand and make sense of it all. No one really understands what is written, but the Holy Spirit shows us and we ought to show other people. So we must understand God's words intellectually. It's important that we all get educated in God's word. And it's important that we all help others to get educated in God's word. My next point is God's word must be received emotionally. It's right there in the text. It's right there, brother. After this. It's right there in the text, brother. After verse number nine says, Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priests and strive, and the Levites who, ta who taught the word of God, taught the people and said to all the people, this day is holy. This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not moan nor weep for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Let me tell you, the word of God will make you emotional. Let me tell you, if, if you haven't been emotional this month, just sit down a minute and talk to me. If emotions hadn't gone through your mind at all, if you haven't had any kind of emotions going on, I want to tell you, you ought to hear the word of God, and the word of God ought to make you emotional. You, ought, you know, the, the, the old folk used to say it like this, that, that if, 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 you, if you know the Lord, you ought to show some sign. The word of God ought to make you emotional. And it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or extrovert. The word of God ought to make you emotional. The Bible says when the word of God was read, they began to weep. They began to cry. They began to get all disturbed and emotional. Because God was showing them their sins in the midst of his word. When God shows us us, it ought to cause some emotions to come across you. When God shows you your sin, you ought to be sorrowful about it. When God shows you your mess, you ought to be messed up about it. When God shows you who you really are, you ought to be emotional every now and then. And you don't have to go to the sanctified church to be emotional. You ought, you ought to get emotional every now and then, so you ought to be intellectually sound. You ought to be emotionally sound. And the word of God will make you transformational. The word of God ought to make you transformational. The word of God ought to be something about you that's different about you. Yeah. And not only is it about you, but it's about other people too. Yeah. And so the word of God ought to make one transformational. The word of God ought to make you intellectually sound. The word of God ought to make you emotionally disturbed. The word of God ought to make you a transformational leader. You ought to be emotional, yes. You ought to be intellectual, yes. But it ought to be some sign shown where you can transfer it to one, one person to the other. Look at verse number 10 and I quit. Then he said to them, go your way. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. And send portions of those, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. This is the 
The, this is, for this day is holy to the Lord. It is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me tell you, you ought to reach back and get somebody. You ought to be transformational in your word. The word of God ought to make you transformational. The word of God ought to make you reach back and catch somebody who's still doing the things you used to do. The problem with many of us is that we get to a point where it's me, myself, and I. And because it doesn't concern me, myself, nor I, I don't have anything to do with it. But the Bible says right here in the text, Nehemiah chapter 8, it says that they became transformational. They got to a point where they reached back and got somebody. He said, go and eat. You take care of yourself. Go and drink. You take care of yourself. And then he says, send portions to those for whom nothing have been prepared. Now, let me tell you, in the church vernacular today, we don't sin, we take out. Are you with me? <laughs> he didn't say take it out. <laughs> he, he said sin. He said go and, and sin. Make sure that what the word of God has done in your life, you share with other people so it can be done in their lives. The, the, the video of these guys stealing all the copper. I mean, still stole 2,800 feet of copper. I mean, that's a whole lot of copper. Brother Miles, there's a whole heap of copper. I mean, they shut our whole building down. I mean, lights out. We needed God to say, let there be. And we needed light to come skipping through the universe. I mean, they, they just shut the whole place down. So what I did was took the video and sent it to other pastors because I wanted them to know what has gone on over here. You're not too far removed from it. Be wise, be focused, be, be vigilant because there are thieves. The devil himself is as a roaring lion. He's looking for somebody by whom he can devour. That's right. mm -hmm. So I have to be transformational. I have to get to a point where I make sure that I tell everybody else that the devil is on the run. And the devil is running throughout our neighborhoods. And the devil is looking for somebody that he can call, he can treat, treat like they are little children because the devil doesn't care how small you are. The devil doesn't care if you're a large church or a big church. I, 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 I got, this, got this, this, this phone call from, from, from Pastor Jerry Martin from the north side. So the devil doesn't, doesn't care if you're on the south side or north side. I mean, we're some 40 miles apart in the same night. That they hit us. They hit them. I said the same night. The same exact night that they hit them, they hit us. The same night that thieves were, were taking out stuff. And the same night that thieves was misusing us. The same night that thieves were making our insurance go up. Let me tell you, the same night they hit them. Let me tell you, you are not exempt because you're on the south side. You are not exempt because you're on the north side. You're not exempt because you're on the east or the west side. You're not even exempt because you're from the other side of the track. You're not exempt because you're from the other side of the bayou. You're not exempt. God is looking to bless you, but the devil is looking to take your blessings. Don't give him a chance. Don't, don't give him a chance. So you have to be transformational. You have to be so transformational that you warn them. Paul says, mark that man. What he's saying is, make sure that everybody knows that he's about nothing. Paul, Paul says, beware of Alexander the carpet smith, for he has done me much harm in ministry. One brother that left here the wrong way, he decided one day that he needed to come back and talk to me. And in our conversation, I had him to know, sitting right there in my office round, at the round table, I had him to know, I've already labeled you as Alexander the carpet smith. I've already told the people that, that beware of Alexander the carpet smith, for he has done me much harm in ministry. Let me just share with you today, you ought to be transformational. You ought to make a difference in other people's lives. You ought to tell them about the hope that you have in him. You ought to let them know that the devil is out there like a roaring lion. He's trying to, de trying to defray us. He's trying to de distort us. He's trying to misuse us. He's trying to take our money from us. He's trying to take our spirit from us. He is trying to take souls from us. But we have to be transformational. We have to be change agents. Be the change that you want to see. 
If you want to see a neighborhood that's flourishing, a neighborhood that's being blessed, you need to get involved in, and help the neighborhood flourish and be blessed. Be transformational. When we look at the text, the text declares that all the people gathered together in one place. They weren't church hopping. They knew that Sunday morning they needed to be in their place. Back home, they would say it like this, always be on your post. Always be where you're supposed to be. It is dangerous eating from anybody's table. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to get food poison eating from it. One, one, one person would tell you today, they would tell you, oh, I just go from church to church, and I just do what I do, and I just listen. I get a little bit over here, a little bit over here. Let me tell you, religion, Christianity, is not a buffet-style meal. The Bible said they were gathered together in their appointed place. They were gathered together in one area. And they heard the word of God. And when they heard the word of God, they became intellectual. They became intelligent. They became knowledgeable. They began to see things like they've never seen things before. They began to listen like they never said, never listened before. And the Bible says when Ezra read the book, when Ezra read the Bible, they stood up because they respected God's word. When you go to court, the bailiff walk in, he says, all rise. And let me tell you, the crippled man gets up. When the bailiff, when the bailiff said, all rise, the great honorable judge is present. Everybody, the guy that couldn't stand up before he entered the room stands up. How much more do we honor the great judge himself? How much more do we respect God himself? When the word of God is read, you know, I, I sit and I watch members of the New Beginning Church when we're somewhere else. You know, we do it, we do it here and we stand and we, we don't have to really tell people to stand. It's just automatic. We stand out of respect to the word of God. It comes from right here. The people stood out of respect to the word of God when it was being read. And so when I look around, I look around and I see all New Beginning members standing up, even when we're somewhere else. It's because we are taught that the word of God should be respected. So he opened the book. The book became visible in the, in the presence of the people. And, and it became respected in the presence of the It became honored in the presence of the people. And it, it gave us authority. But the authority didn't come because of the people. The authority came because of God. It is God's word. It's not our word. It is God's word. And because it's God's word, then we have joy. Yeah. Then we have support. Yeah. The word of God keeps us. The word of God binds us. The word of God. And then he says, make sure that you take a portions home. He says, he makes sure. Now, see, we busy taking food home when we ought to be taking the word of God home. We, we busy. We busy packing up. I saw one guy walking out of here, right here at this church, right here at the New Beginning Church. He had a trash bag with seven plates, seven colored plates in it. And I just looked at it. And he wanted to tell me, I ain't taking nothing out of there. I said, well, you, there's one thing about it. I don't have to have glasses to see seven plates in a trash bag. See, we're busy taking people physical food. But we ought to send spiritual food because it's the spiritual food that transforms us. It's the spiritual food that changes us. It's the spiritual food that makes us different. The statement says, and it's not good English, but I say it anyway, ain't nobody mad but the devil. And that's why in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our tribulations, we have to always be excellent in the midst of it because we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The text declares that joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why is the joy of the Lord is our strength? Simply because we're in God's presence. We ought to walk daily in his presence. We ought, to, we ought to lead in his presence. We ought to spend time with him in his presence. The joy, you can't have joy unless you're in the presence of the Lord. I didn't say you can't have joy unless you're in the seat at New Beginning. I did say you can't have joy unless you're in the presence of the Lord. 
And let me just tell you, let me just just park right here and let you know that, that somebody says, well, I don't have to stand when everybody else standing. I'm just I'm just in the spirit of the Lord. When 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 I'm in the spirit, I can sit if I want to. But the problem is the word of God says we ought to be on one accord. The word of God says we ought to be as one man. The word of God says we ought to stand in unity. And if we're standing in unity, honoring God, then God can bless us. And then we can have joy. Amen. Regardless of what goes on around us, we can have joy, unspeakable joy. Amen. We can have joy. I didn't say that we can be happy. I said we can have joy. See, happiness is dictated by what goes on on the outside of us. But joy is internal, and it, it makes a difference on the inside of us, and it makes a difference on the outside of us. Hey, the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> if we're going to have strength, we got to have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is something that only God can give. Man can't give it to you. You can't legislate it. You can't get it counseled through. You cannot get a therapist to give it to you. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and it only comes from the Lord. Yeah. There are some people just running around like a hamster on a wheel. They're just running around, and they're trying to make sure that they have joy. This man didn't give a joy. That man didn't give a joy. That woman didn't give a joy. And then now they didn't give us joy. The joy of the Lord is the strength, and it comes from the Lord. Yeah. It was joy, I tell you. Over 2,000 years ago, it was joy. The world was in a messed up condition. The world was going to hell in a handbasket. The world was, was doomed to do nothing but fail. But over 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Christ got off in a little place called Bethlehem of Judea. Jesus of Christ came. Come on, Sister Davis. Jesus of Christ came in Bethlehem of Judea. He got off in a little place called Bethlehem. Yes, he did. He came of a virgin called Mary. Yes, he did. He born. He, they laid him in a, a hog trough. They laid him in a manger. They wrapped him in grave clothes, stripped the clothes. Yes, they did. It was Jesus of Christ that brought us joy. It was joy. It was glory to, to God in the highest because Jesus Christ had been born. He walked these mundane shores some 33 years. He died on Calvary's hill. They killed him. Mean men killed him. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. Jesus the Christ died for you and he died for me. He died. In that same joy, Jesus the Christ, they buried him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus the Christ brings us joy. There may be somebody here today that has never tried Jesus. You need to try him if you're at your worst time. You need to try him if you're at your your good time. You need to try him if you're at your, bad, your best time. His name is Jesus. Mary's oldest child. They died on Calvary. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is here today. I offer him to you. The door of the church is open. Jesus has made us intellectual. Jesus allows us to be emotional. But most of all, Jesus has come that we would be transformational. The door is open. You can try Jesus. The door is open. This is your opportunity to get to know him. This is your opportunity to go to heaven when you die. This is an opportunity to reach Jesus, the author of great joy. The door is open. If you want to get to know him, just trust him today. Believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for your sins. He rose from the dead. And he rose and he's coming back again. Yes, he is. If you want to go to heaven, 
if you want to live right on earth, just bow your head with me and invite him in. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and thank God. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who struggle, who struggle through life, and you need the joy of the Lord to be your strength, let me pray with you and ask God to keep you. Father God, we thank you for another privilege. Thank you for forgiving us and saving us. Thank you for who you are and what you do. God, we glorify you for another privilege to get it right. Bless our lives. Forgive us for our sins that we will never turn away from you again. That we will never turn to our sins again. Give us the joy of the Lord. Lord, somebody who's listening is struggling with joy. I ask you to renew their spirit. Renew their joy. Fill their joy cup. Bless joy bells to ring again. Encourage them, Father God, that they will encourage others. Bless them with a hunger and a thirst for your word. That your word will make them intellectuals. That your word will make them emotional. That your word will make them transformational that their lives will be made the better, that they will be different, and that they will glorify you in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Others of you who may not have a church home or in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church. The New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the one who guides us and leads us. Why don't you inbox us and let us know you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. We'll be glad to rejoice with you and welcome you to the New Beginning Church. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we want to thank God for, for the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We all know that the devil is on his job. The question is, when will we get about our business and get about our job, get about the Lord's business? Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. I'm excited to know that God has given us favor one more time. Amen, amen. I said he's given us favor one more time. One more time. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement. Thank you so much for your money. Thank you for your strength and believing that God will make a way out of nowhere. And God has made a way. And let me tell you, <laughs> and it was like a way out of no way. <laughs> We've been out of this building for one month and three days. And God has blessed us again. Thank you, God. And if he had not done it, it still would be God. <laughs> he would still be the great God. He would still be who he is. 
So we serve the awesome God and we need to keep serving him, respecting him, respecting his word, and making sure that his word become visible so that we can be transformation. It is offering time and it's time to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. <clears throat> If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served if you need an envelope. Father God, we thank you for money, for increase, for income. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for every giver, every person who has given, every person who will give, every person who's given tonight. We ask you to bless them. Lord, give us favor again. Even when we don't know what to ask, God, you keep favoring us. Even when we don't know how to go, God, you keep guiding us and favoring us. And Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Bless every gift tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I'm asking every adult to give over and beyond his or her tithes and offering $250 for our building fund, for our building fund. And as you can see tonight, your building fund is going to the building fund. And it's, it's your tithes and offering and your sacrificial gifts being given to the cause of worshiping and honoring God through ministry. So I'm asking each adult to give $250 over and above your tithes and offering, and you can spread it out over a period of time. And I'm asking each young person, each child, to give $50 over and above his or her tithes and offerings and gear it toward the building fund. Why don't we stand to come and give unto the Lord? God has. He has smiled. He has. He has set me free. God has. God has. He has smiled. He has. He's been good to me. It saved. I once was lost, but now I see. Found, I was blind. Now I see. God has. He has smiled on me. He set me free. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. God has. He's sure been good. So those who are giving electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. For those of you who are mailing in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and thank you. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for, um, for being in Bible study, for being a part. To all our family members and friends, thank you for joining us tonight. And I want to say again, thank you to every pastor, every church, every family member, every individual, every group, every company, every corporation that has given 
to our worthy cause. Thank you so much. Uh, you have shown throughout this nation what you really are and who you really are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for allowing our ministry to move on smoothly, uninterrupted, and God has blessed us through your gifts, and we appreciate it greatly. Amen. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Father, for blessing us to be back in this building. God, we thank you, Lord, for providing for us and walking with us. God, we thank you, Father God, for strengthening us and holding our hearts and our minds. Lord, we thank you for miracles that we have seen during this last month. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to have testimonies of how good you are. Now, Lord, we ask you to keep us. We can't be kept without you. We ask you to bless us. We can't be blessed without you. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless our church to be a shining light in a dark and dismal world. We pray for thieves and robbers. We ask you, Father God, to transform them, to make them over, to change their hearts. We ask you, Father God, to bother them by way of the Holy Spirit. Don't let them sleep, don't let them eat unless they come to righteousness in you. We pray that you bother their hearts and their minds, Father God, that they will turn to you and bless your name. Lord, we thank you, Father, for just being God. We respect what you do. We respect who you are. And we honor you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. 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 God bless you and God keep you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.